What to know when submitting an all cash offer? Uh, isn't that a nice problem to have, Lane? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. That would be nice um, having it's enough cash. But um, very interesting topic because we are seeing a lot of cash offers today. Actually, an increased number, believe it or not, even given you know the, the stressful times and so forth. We know the baby boomers today have uh, more money than ever before, and these are the folks that are helping their kids and the first-time buyers buy properties. And also for them uh, moving, scaling down uh, to buy their retirement or their forever home. We're seeing them having the cash they built up and the equity they built doing this. Lane, let's go ahead and talk about like the, the most important things and the strategies uh, when submitting a cash offer and some of the benefits. Yeah, and I would say in addition to what you just said too, over the next five to 10 years, there's gonna be more of an, uh, an increase in a transfer of wealth, so to speak. So there's gonna be more cash available to purchase these homes. So yes, when you're submitting an all cash offer, uh, a lot of people and historically have felt that uh, you can kind of get a pricing discount. Maybe you can lower, like offer just a little bit lower than, um, the asking price to get to get a deal on the home, but with five, 10 offers, that might not be the case, at least in today's marketplace. But one of the things, or several of the things that benefit you being an all cash buyer, you're writing an offer, being able to write something with no loan contingency, no appraisal contingency, a quick close, um, you may have to be prepared to give somebody a rent back because a lot of home, a lot of buyers right now need to sell their house to buy something. So you might be able to be prepared to offer a rent back. And a lot of the all cash um, buyers are offering free rent backs. And then obviously you might be able to get a, a better price there. So those are some of the things that benefit you as being an all cash offer and be prepared to, to do. So you, when you have an agent that helps you uh, and you're an all cash buyer, you want to hammer down on these things because you want to stress that you have minimal contingencies you can possibly offer a rent back and you have and you're offering a strong price absolutely lane what i might add to that is because whether you're a cash offer or not a cash offer what a buyer has to realize today in a multiple offer environment is you need to stand out and you need to put yourself in the seller's shoes who's looking at many many offers and minimize risk the seller wants a sure thing Again, as Lane mentioned, most often they're moving on to their forever home. They've got something else down the line that hinges on the sale of this home. So every piece of an offer until you close escrow has risk involved from inspection contingencies, generally appraisal contingencies, loan contingencies, you know, approval of uh, association documents, et cetera. So an all cash offer can significantly minimize the risk and the doubt in a seller's mind that this is a viable offer and this is going to close. So. As Lane mentioned, the two biggies with that are you have no loan contingency because you're proving your money is in the bank. And of course, when you submit the offer, you want to show proof of those funds and that they're available. And then number two, that you're not worried about what the bank says the house is worth because there's no loan against the property. Uh, third, which I think Lane touched on, which is very, very important, is being understanding, again, giving the seller comfort, giving them what they want in a house. And what they want is, again, to know that they've got a solid place to stay until they're, um, they've got the new house locked up. You're able to close in five to 10 days. They're not able to get out in that time. So allowing for that rent back or even letting them stay rent free for 30 days, as crazy as that sounds, we're seeing a lot of our offers come in that way. And that's very attractive to the seller. So I think uh, my take on this again is just, it's all about creating an attractive package where the sellers stay. That offer stands out. That's the one that we want to take. And let's say, 10 to 15 percent of the offers that are coming in are all cash what happens with the 85 to 90 percent who are financing and competing against these all cash offers we're going to touch base on what you need to know uh competing against all cash offers no that's absolutely right and uh, you know a lot of you are probably waiting for this part of the, the this topic because you say well gee i'm not all cash and we know that is the minority and most of the clients we deal with are financing and we are often in multiple offer situations most of the time and we're competing with all cash offers but again our strategy is and, and i think for anyone that's working with an agent you want your strategy to be what can you do to put yourself ahead of the game and have the seller want to pick your offer and at the end of the day it's also important to understand a closed escrow is a good escrow so even when there's financing involved if you're pre-approved you can minimize contingencies. Your offer is just as good as a cash offer. It's just as good because at the end of the day, the escrow is going to close, the loan will fund, and the seller will have all of their money. So when competing with cash offers, there's a lot of strategic points that you can employ to make sure that you rise into that realm 
with the cash offers. And I'll let Lane go ahead and touch on what those are. Yeah, because let's talk about the, again, the benefits of an all cash offer. There are benefits of when you're submitting a ca an all cash offer, you're able to do a quick close. You're able to write an offer with no loan contingency, no appraisal contingency. You might have the flexibility of, do of offering a rent back and you could be offering a pretty good price. So those are the same ways of what you're maybe going to have to set your offer up. You might have to go minimal contingencies, if not no appraisal contingency. You may have to offer some sort of a rent back. You, you're going to have to write, obviously, a strong price in some cases, uh, with a good lender, you might be able to be strong enough to go with no loan contingency. So now you have the same qualifications as a uh, being a finance offer as an all cash offer with no loan, no appraisal, quick close, being able to offer a rent back and, and offering a strong price. And that's the best way you're, you're going to be. Able, and those are the strategies that you, you can take in to competing with an all cash offer. Awesome. Let's take two of those points too, Lane, because a lot of buyers, I think, are a little... Um, uh, I'm going to say underinformed with regards to how the loan contingency works. The contract, the purchase contract in California has a built in 70, 17 day loan contingency program. But realistically, if you've done your homework and you've pre approved with your lender of choice, they've already desktop underwritten your loan. They've reviewed your, your, your income, your debt, your whole financing package, and you're essentially approved for that loan before you even write the offer. The contingency period is built in, I believe, from days past when we didn't have the technology we have now and we didn't ha have the availability to get all the information right up front to basically say, hey, this is a slam dunk deal. It was allowing the time for all the processing. Now, the loan still has to be processed. It has to go through all the channels. But I can speak for myself on a couple of homes I bought where I've been competing. We were pre-approved. I knew unless I lost my job, I was going to be able to get that loan. I didn't have to wait for the final underwriter's approval at the end of the day after it processed because we had the desktop underwriting at the beginning and we went in with no loan contingency. The only risk is that if you can't get your loan, you would be at risk to lose that earnest money deposit. But with good communication with the buyer and the lender, you can minimize that risk and feel comfortable with that. Secondly, the appraisal situation. As long as you are putting um, over 20% down, you've got a little wiggle room in case that appraisal comes in low. And we have to remember the appraisal is the bank's opinion of what the house is worth based on past history. They don't take very much into account what the current uh, supply and demand situations are. And we know a house is worth what a buyer is willing to pay and a seller is willing to take first and foremost. So yes, an appraisal is a benchmark, but it's not the definitive defining uh, number as to what a house is worth. Yep. We're, we're also hearing um, from others in our industry that escrows aren't necessarily closing on time right now. Loans are a little bit delayed. And maybe that's a reason why somebody might appeal towards an all cash offer. And we've certainly experienced it as listing agents, but there's no like team up with a good quality lender. And if you don't have one, we have one that can still get you closed in 21 days or sooner. So you can compete against these all cash offers. They can do the, the, the appraisal, uh, the loan contingency. If you're going to have one in place in 10 to 12 days, appraisal contingency in 10 to 12 days, if you're going to have one in place. And there's no reason that you still can't get this done because all day long for our buyers, we've teamed up with great preferred lenders on our team that can be able to make this happen. And then we're closing on time. And we're actually, if not early, we just had a 20, 21 day or sooner close and we close in 19 days. So if we're competing against an all cash offer that's offering 14 days, but they might be trying to get a little bit of a discount because they're all cash, it'll be worth it to a seller to accept our offer if we're just a little bit higher and maybe only have to wait a week, if that, to get it close. Awesome. Great point, Lane. It isn't, it is not all or nothing. So as I say, maybe we can create a no loan contingency, even when you have a loan to Lane's point, or we can minimize that time frame when you partner with an aggressive lender. There's so many pieces to the puzzle and creating that package that helps that seller choose your offer. And of course, teaming up with good agents makes a lot of sense too, that you know we're gonna dot the I's and cross the T's because a uh, seller loves to see a very complete package and again, feel comfortable uh, moving forward. And I just want to speak to all the potential home buyers out there. It is really competitive. That's like, there's no, uh, you know, beating around the bush on that. It's extremely competitive. You're going to go up against six, seven. A lot of times lately, it's been like 11 or 12 offers. So don't, like if somebody's telling you they can do, they can only do 30 days is the soonest, or they, they need 17 to 21 days on the loan contingency. Like, don't take that. Don't accept that anymore because you want to get your dream house. You don't want to miss out on it. You need a team in place to be able to get that offer accepted. And we're, and we know exactly how to do that. So just don't, don't lose out on your dream home. That's all I, I, I that's one of my pet peeves is hearing about um, somebody who, 
it is missing out on the dream home because they were just accepting what somebody else is telling them. I think, Lane, and again, as we wrap up this topic, and I think it should, I can see, Lane, you, the, the passion that you have that we exude on our team, and it's not to toot our own horn or anything, but, but it's not to be complacent as a buyer out there and just fill in the boxes and check the blanks and check the boxes, fill in the blanks on the purchase contract. But it's to, it's to ask questions and say, what can we do to put ourselves ahead of the game with minimal risk? And there's a lot of things that you can do to be able to get in the game and position yourself to win. And that's what you want to do today with multiple offers. You need to position yourself, position yourselves to win the prize, that gold ring, which is you getting the house. You got it. You hit the nail on the head.